Hey everybody, it's Matt here and I will be your host for today. And we're so glad you're able to join us online. Welcome to Bethel Online where we are a church that is for Chambersburg. No matter where you're watching this from or how you're watching this, we are so honored that you decided to spend the next hour or so with us. Throughout the whole service today, if you miss anything or forget where to look for something, we will have all of the links in the description of this video for you to refer back to. Also, we want to encourage you to take a moment right now and share this video on whatever platform you're watching this on. Whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or Church Online, we want to encourage you to share this service with your friends. We want your friends and family to experience this as well, and sharing this video is an easy way that you can do that. And we'd love for you to partner with us through your giving. You can go online at bagseberg.org slash give and learn all of the ways that you can give or simply hit the give now button and do that as well. Your generosity really is what helps us share the gospel each week and to be able to do church online throughout the Chambersburg region and even other parts of the world. So thank you for giving. Now during the service today, don't be afraid to get rid of whatever distractions are before you. Maybe you'll need to put your phone down or refill that cup of coffee before the service begins. Whatever you need to do, we want to just encourage you to be focused and ready for whatever God speaks to you. Make that conscious effort to say, God, I want to connect with you. I want to meet with you. And I believe that God has something special just for you during this experience. If you're looking for other ways to connect with Bethel, I would highly encourage you to download our free app. All you have to do is search Bethel Seaburg in your app store. On the app, you can see what events are coming up, receive special push notifications, watch previous sermons, and so much more. Well, that's all I have for now. Our online experience is about to begin. Feel free to sing along with us as we get ready to worship and enjoy the service. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to have you join us online this morning. Gather your families, get ready to worship the Lord with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. Let's celebrate the goodness of God this morning. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. I was breathing but not alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my truth till I paid Cause when you call my name
is raging But I will not be shaken For I know who's in control The greater one within me Is more than what's against me He's in control I know He'll see me through like before He is Lord He is Lord I'm not afraid anymore He is Lord He is Lord Tomorrow is calling me to follow heart and soul. I will go. The maker of the promise will finish what he started heart and soul. I will. Mountains are still being moved 
Thank you, worship team, for that and for sharing your gifts and talents. 
Right now, I wanna share with you some events that you might wanna be a part of. On November 22nd, we're celebrating our two year anniversary of our Fort Chambersburg campaign. Over the last two years, Bethel has been raising funds not only for a new location, but for ways to make a greater impact in our community. We will have updates on the progress of the campaign along with a vision for the final year of the campaign. There will be some food that morning, so you wanna make sure you get here a little early for that Sunday. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the best parts about the holidays is seeing the Christmas decorations. Whether it's beautiful Christmas lights at Chick-fil-A to simply putting on the fireplace Yule log on your living room TV, decorations can make a big impact. And that's why our women's ministry is hosting a Christmas decorating party on November 19th, starting at 6.30 p.m. The ladies are getting together to fellowship and decorate the church. If you'd like to help Bethel get ready for Christmas season, then let Tiffany Miller, who was our women's ministry leader, know by signing up online. This will be a great way to spread some Christmas cheer and to connect with other women in the church. And lastly, we're really excited about our Christmas series this year. Hi, my name is Joel, and I'm the director of our church play, The Glory of Christmas. I'm the least likely person to play Mary, let alone deliver the Son of God. I'm a middle-aged former soccer mom. My name's Joseph. Oh? You played Bunko with my mom. I play Joseph. I don't like to mention it, but I am a formally trained prodigy of the theater arts. There's a little bit of controversy over my choice to cast Tony as the wise man. What's that smell? Is the age difference what's bothering you? I want you to know it doesn't bother me. It's, I think the shepherds deserve a little more poetic language. It's the Bible, Dan. God may beg to differ with you. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. This is no way to treat your actors. We are telling the most beautiful and important story. I haven't bathed in a month. Why can't I stop talking about food? We hope you and your family will be able to join us for this special Christmas series that will start on November 29th and end on Christmas Eve. If you'd like to see all of the events that are happening at Bethel, you can find them online or on our church app. All you have to do is go to bagseaburg.org slash events or search Bethel Seaburg in your app store. Thanks for listening to the announcements. And now here's Pastor Aaron with this morning's message. Hey Bethel, hope you're enjoying this morning at home with your family. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday in person. Today we're finishing our series called This Is Us, and throughout these past few weeks, we've been looking at what makes us who we are as a church. We are people who should value community. We are people God wants to use to share Jesus with others, and we are people God has equipped to serve our church, this community, and our world. This is who we are. This is us. This is how God wants to build his church and to make a difference. For the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about giving and how when we're faithful in our generosity, it not only makes a difference in our life, it also impacts the lives of others. Can I be honest with you for a second? Sometimes talking about finances can be a little uncomfortable, right? Like just last week, Abby and I were talking about what my budget looks like right now and what our budget may look like once we get married. And it wasn't necessarily one of the most exciting talks we've ever had, but we had to do it. In the same way, giving and generosity are things we need to talk about as Jesus followers. The Bible tells us that it's better to give than to receive. So I want to ask you, how generous would you say you are? There's a few things we have to understand as Americans when it comes to our wealth. Most of us feel like we're not rich, but we are. And most of us feel like we are generous, but we're not. The reason why we don't feel like we're rich is because we tend to compare our wealth with someone who has more than we do. But how often do we stop and consider how blessed we are compared to the rest of the world? Think about this. If you drive or own a car, depending on the study you read, that puts you somewhere in the top 6 to 9% of the wealthiest people in the world. That's incredible to think about. You're in the top 10% in the world. So do you realize how blessed you are? Sometimes we take realities like this for granted. I mean, think about right now at your home. You're watching this maybe on TV or your computer or your phone. You most likely are in a climate controlled house. Maybe on the dining room table is brunch with many kinds of food or maybe you're even planning what lunch looks like with the many restaurant options we have in the area. 
Maybe you're still in your pajamas and you'll soon get ready and change into something else to go out into public. That's if you can find the right outfit to wear. I could go on and on, but what I'm trying to say is you're blessed. We're rich compared to most of the world and we don't even realize it. Now going back to our earlier question, are you generous? Most would say yes, but listen to this. The average American actually gives only 2.8% of what they bring in away. If you make more, that percentage actually goes down. If you make over $100,000 a year, you don't give 2.8%, you give 2.6% away. Friends, that's not generosity. That's not us. And as believers, we should lead the way in generosity because we believe it's more blessed to give than to receive. Maybe the reason why we don't feel like we can give more is because we feel like we can't. Sometimes for myself, it's not that I can't, but because I'm afraid to do it. Maybe you can relate. We have bills, student loans, mortgages, retirement, and a list of other things. Perhaps we're afraid when it comes to giving because we don't trust God in the area like we should. Today, I want to challenge you and challenge each and every one of us to trust God in giving because that is who we should be. This is who we are, people on mission who trust God in every area of our life, even in our finances. We can trust God in our giving because God has already given us so much. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talked a lot about giving to the Corinthian church. In 2 Corinthians 9, we're going to look at one of those talks and see what God does. So 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Paul tells us a few key things here. Verse 6, he says, If you sow sparingly, you will also reap sparingly. But if you sow generously, you will reap generously. Verse 7, everyone must decide in their own heart how much to give. So if you feel manipulated or pressured to give, then don't give. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, God will bless you abundantly. You won't lack. Verse 10, God gives us resources to sow and bread to eat. And then verse 11, we will be enriched in every way. So according to this passage, we are to give, and what God does is he gives back abundantly. We do because of what God does. Instead of living in fear with our finances, we live in faith and as an act of worship to God, we tithe. So maybe you don't know what this word tithe means. The Hebrew word maser means one-tenth. One-tenth of everything that comes to us, we give back to God in an act of worship. Now some believe that tithing is not really relevant today because it wasn't talked about in the New Testament too much. But if you go back before the law even existed, we see Abraham returned first increase back to God. And then in the New Testament, Jesus says you should tithe. And he also says to not forget the most important matters of the law. Tithing is a part of who we are. It's what God's people do. When God blesses us, we worship him in this act of honor and say, I'm returning back to you 10% of what you have given to me. Then God multiplies it. It builds our faith. We give some more. And then we experience the abundance of our God. And he creates a generous heart in us. There are three thoughts about the power of the tithe that I want to highlight quickly. The first is this, the tithe teaches us to put God first. So Deuteronomy 14.23 says, the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. When you put God first in your finances, it means you're rearranging your whole life around God. It means you have to make massive changes with how you spend. And change, it requires faith because it takes faith to give first. Increasing your life should be a reminder that because of what God has done for you, you will honor him by giving back to him. Tithing teaches us to put God first. Number two, the tithe builds our faith. We see the faithfulness of God through tithing. Malachi 3, 10 and 11 teaches us this. Listen to these verses. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. 
Test me in this, says the Lord, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord. Maybe you've heard this before, but I want to reiterate this truth. You can search all of scripture and you'll find this is the only time where God says you're allowed to test him. Test me, he says. Don't believe me? Try it. Give it a shot. You will be surprised if you do. So the world says consume, but God says give and I will cause it to multiply. So when you're obedient to scriptures like this, it builds faith and it creates a generous heart because once you see God's blessings in your life through tithing, it will create a passion for giving and being more generous. The tithe builds our faith and it creates an even more generous heart. And then number three, the tithe provides for the work of God's church. When you return 10% into God's church, a lot gets done in the world. Again, Malachi 3.10 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. I want to ask everyone watching right now, have any of you been impacted spiritually by God's work at this church? If you have, type in the comment section, my life has. Or what about your family? If their life has been impacted spiritually by God's work here, comment, our family has. Bring the tithe to the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Spiritual food in a house makes a difference. We may not always be able to see how our tithe makes a difference in someone's life on this side of eternity, but believe us, it's making a difference. Why is it important for you and your family to give to the church? Well, for one, it's, I look at it, it's a biblical requirement. I think both of us saw our family give in different things as kids. And so when our boys see us give and do things, then they know that that is a part of our walk with God and, and seeing the faith or the whatever we do in different times, they catch on. And sometimes they tell us when they think we should give. What inspired you to give towards our live stream and even donate equipment and time during COVID and our youth group live series that we did. Both of you guys played a, a huge part and even your son Jordan uh, during that whole time. So what inspired you to, to donate and be a part of that? Over the last 15 years, I've kind of developed a passion for sound and video and technology, electronics, you name it. And being a part of the media team here, it just felt like a natural place to, to give towards that and also help continue it, being a part of it. Um, it's a new medium out there that's not used everywhere until this past season. A lot of places really needed to learn it quickly. And I'm just uh, pleased that Bethel already had it in place and we didn't have to scramble in March to figure out how to do it. It was already in place and it's just it's just part of who I am. I love the technology and being able to put something out there. For me, what, what inspired you to to allow Brian to give, <laughs> to help invest in a, in a camera or a lot of people don't realize that when you have a spouse in ministry, you know, it's not always at the pulpit or preaching, but it's people working behind the scenes and there's a flip side where you're at home and you're, you don't always have Brian or Jordan around. And so what are some of the ways that you've been inspired to give and how has that impacted your life? Um, I know it's something that they love doing. And so watching, and especially watching Jordan um, step out a little bit, um, I, I think he stepped out of his comfort zone a bit to, to do that. And then to just watch his interest grow and start to do a little bit more. So that's been neat to watch. Um, but they both love to do it. And I don't know if I always cared when, I mean, we were in lockdown, so sometimes you were giving me a break. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. so sometimes it was nice. I love having my family, and sometimes it was nice for them to go do their thing, and then I would be able to quietly do my thing. It, it, the cameras give some of the younger folks a place to fit in that might like the video game type aspect 
and helps them enjoy coming to church if they have a place they can fit in and do something and serve. Have you ever been impacted by someone's giving? When um, we were engaged, I guess, my grandfather owned a company and we did not realize he, when he sold the company, he had already divvied out shares for each of his grandchildren and his children and things like that. So he had given us money that we were then able to have to get things for the house. So that was actually kind of nice. Most people go into debt to buy their furniture when they're married, and we were able to pay for some of the, we at least had a living room and a bedroom, so that was nice. Um, and he was always doing that, like take us out to eat, paid the bill, wanted to take us to ice cream. So he was always treating us to look for things like that, so. I'm not really, thinking of oh, the only story I can think of is there's this guy named Matt who when he comes over he calls and says do you need me to bring lunch or anything <laughs> <laughs> well I want to introduce you to to people that have been impacted by your giving that you may not even know about and so uh, Jared and Nicole whenever you're ready you can come in and I'm gonna get out of the way oh boy <laughs> is this a setup Hello. 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 I'm Brian. Brian. Aaron. Mm -hmm. so, well, I heard about Jared and Nicole's story, and they actually experienced Bethel first online. Mm -hmm. And so, Jared, do you want to share a little bit what that was like? Sure. Um. So the COVID thing hit, of course, shut everybody down, and at that time. We were kind of transitioning into a new season. And one of those seasons was looking for a church. And I like to do my research. So I went around listening to a lot of streamings of churches. And I kept coming, I've always known Bethel, but I've never really done my research on Bethel. So I was watching videos and watching videos, and I was watching videos of other churches, but it seemed like the more I watched Bethel's the more at peace I was that we were supposed to come here. So we ended up coming here whenever they, the first Sunday they started back through COVID. Mm -hmm. I was like, awesome, this they're starting, so let's mm -hmm. go. And we've been coming ever since. And they were saying that you were one of the ones that kind of kickstarted all this. So mm -hmm. in reality, us being here is direct reflection of your obedience and giving and doing what God put on your heart to bring us, and we're a family of eight, so that's eight mm -hmm. lives that are directly afflicted from your obedience and what God put on your heart. So thank you for that. This church is very blessed. And that all comes through multiple people's obedience to God's talent and resources and everything that he's given to them. So we're thankful to be here. Well, we're happy to have, I mean, I saw you guys come, I think, when I was up in the computer and we saw new people. So it was exciting to see. We hear about people that like things on Facebook and all that, but we don't, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> we get to meet the people that are actually being impacted by it. Wasn't that an awesome story? Listen, giving is what we do. It's what we do because of what God has done for us. This is us, giving changes lives. The question I have for you today is this, if this is what we do, are you a part of we? I'm not forcing you to give, but I'm telling you, you're missing out on the blessing of God and that he's promised in scripture. We're so confident in what the Bible says on this topic that we have set up a challenge for anyone who has never tithed before. Pastor Gary and the Deacon team are establishing a three-month tithing challenge for any first-time tither after this message, based off of Malachi 3.10. So God says to test him with the tithe. If you have never tithed before, but you commit to doing it faithfully for the next three months, and you don't see God's blessing in your life, we will refund 100% of your tithe for this period of time. If you wanna take this challenge, there will be a link below for you to sign up to be a part of it. 
We want you to experience the blessing God promises each of us. We want something for you, your life, not just from you. Being a giving church, this is us, guys. This is who we are. It's something we get to do. And God wants to build his church with people's hearts who are generous, not focused on being a consumer, but being a giver so that lives will be changed by the gospel. Because God gave, you and I can give. Let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just come to you and I thank you for everybody that's watching online. Without resources coming in, we would never have this opportunity to reach beyond our walls. So we thank you for providing in many ways for this church. And God, I realize that when it comes to giving, tithing, many people have concerns. There might be a lack of faith. And I pray that through this message, through the word, through the scriptures, Lord, that have been spoken today, that you would cause faith to rise up in our lives to where we can trust you with our resources. God, help us to understand that we give because you first gave. If there's anybody here that's struggling, God, I pray that through their faithfulness that they would see, Lord, your blessing in their life. God, we know that you will take care of every need in our life, not every want, but every need. So Lord, we thank you that you are the giver of life, that you've already, already given us the greatest blessing that we could have ever had by sending your son Jesus to this earth. And now we've been called to share the gospel with others and through resources through our giving is one way that we go about doing that. God, we love you and we worship you. In your name, amen. What a great message from Pastor Aaron. I hope you were challenged by that today and I want to encourage you to take the next step in your journey and walk with God. Maybe that's a great question to ask in your own life. What is it that God wants me to do next? Maybe you've never tithed before or haven't fully trusted God with your finances. I would encourage you to do the Give Challenge. Just like Pastor Aaron said, if you've never tithed in the last six months and you need that kickstart to begin your giving journey, I would encourage you to do that today. All you have to do is go to bagseaburg.org slash challenge and click the button that says, take the challenge. There you'll be given instructions on how to begin tithing. And I'd also want to encourage you to take your next step with others. You may not need it, but somebody might need you. There are many ways you can connect with others. The first way is through this online experience. Engage in the chat window. We have people available to pray for you and to connect with you. You can also get connected with a small group. You can find all of our available small groups online. And lastly, you can join us in person next Sunday at 10 a.m. So that's all for me. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Know that Bethel loves you and we are for you. We love that you're a part of our church family and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.